our guest today is the £35 million craft queen turned dragon. After heading into the den last summer, Sarah Davies has been putting her money where her mouth is, but only after giving those wannabe entrepreneurs a good grilling. You, you, I know you're new at all of this, you know, you only joined just last year, but you're, you're very confident. You seem like you've hit the ground running. Do you know, that's the one thing that everybody says to me. And, do you know, believe it or not, that clip there was from, like, day three or four. Mm -hmm. I made my first investment on the morning of the second day, and I made three investments that day. Yeah. I mean, I went, I went to dinner on the night, and the guy said to me, wow, you don't like to eat in Gentry, girl, do you? <laughs> but did you do that deliberately? Did you think, right, I've, I've got to get in, I've got to break the seal? No, I just... I just got a bit overexcited. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so some fantastic businesses and went for it. Now, looking back at all those investments that yep. you made on that day, were you over-enthusiastic? How have they panned out? Well, do you know what? Two of the ones that I did on that first day were the tan cream, you know, Mike? Yes. Awesome business. Mm -hmm. Just broke on a fantastic big deal for them in America. And Mac Talk, my little chilli gum, chilli jam guy, you know, he came in yeah. and he played his song and cried and I cried and I gave him 50 grand. <laughs> 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 oh, oh, I'm so so skint <laughs> now, I'm skint. That's pretty much how it went down. So what I found is yeah. I've just had to put a lot of work in to help those businesses kind of come on yeah. that next step. In other words, step. your heart got a little bit ahead of your head. All right. Well, if you want to say it like that, fair enough. But now my head's having to work harder to make up for the decisions that the heart made, let's just say. Is there yeah. a certain criteria that you f you follow in your mind to as to what you're going to invest in? I think I didn't have one before I started. I definitely will have one going into the next series. Right. And do you know what it is? People. Right. It's, it's people mm. you invest in. You know, you, a fantastic entrepreneur could carry a mediocre product. Yes. But you couldn't have the best products in sliced bread and someone who wasn't an enthusiast. Like that guy. It was actually a pretty great product yes. he was pitching. But I just thought, Craigie Pet, if you're not going to get on and sell them, who's going to do yeah. it for you? Yeah. And so you've just got to... You've got to have the people who've got the real bit between the teeth. Without sounding sexist, do you think that female investors like yourself have different criteria to men. When you're looking at something, I, I, I personally would always think, is this something I would use or I would buy yeah. or yeah. I can relate to? And if I can't say one of those three things, then I just think, no, it's not for me. Do you know, a very good friend of mine, my mate Deborah, gave us a bit of advice. She said, don't think of yourself as a woman in business, mm. yeah. just think of yourself as being in business. Yeah. However, I think I've got a unique insight into the female psyche and consumer buying habits. And I think women are really good at being able to empathise yes. with others. So I can imagine what the men would... I've invested in a lot of male-centric products, like that thing that works out where you cut your hole in the tiles. Yes. Very blokey product. I've never, <laughs> never cut the a hole in the tiles. Like <laughs> <laughs> but, but I've got it. But I've got it. Um, yeah, yeah. Whereas I think men might struggle to understand yes. some of the more female-centric products. On the whole, generalising, but, you know... And yeah. a toilet brush cleaner, that was one of the things that you invested in, wasn't it? Well, you see, you need to be in especially the mind of a woman for that, don't Especially at the you? moment, yeah. Mm -hmm, <laughs> and I think what's really interesting is a lot of the time, you're, you're so right, if you are prepared to support people in business, because it's something that, that I do as well when I'm, when I'm not here, um, is you, you have to... You have to believe in the story. You have to know that it's come from the heart. And mm -hmm. I think that where you've been great as well is you're not afraid to take people down a peg or two. If they're literally... They're, oh, yeah. they're, they're, they're arrogant, they've just seen a yeah. gap in the market and they've decided to go for it, it's, fit, it's a quite a cynical marketing idea that they've come up with, but there's no substance to back it up and no heart to back it up. You're right, and, and that happened a few times on the day. I remember once we had um, a young girl it's coming up in the next few episodes and she came in and she really thought she was bigger than that brand. You see, I instantly just think... Mm -mm. Well, well, I just thought, you know what? Someone needs to give her that feedback, otherwise her business is never going to succeed and she'll not understand why. So I decided I was going to give her that feedback in a really constructive way. Mm. I said, look, as someone who's built a business on the brand of them as a person, you've got... Your product's got to stand up for itself. You're just the enhancement to that. Yeah. And I could see, as I was telling her, it's going in one ear and out the other. She couldn't give her monkeys what I was saying. And all I heard was this massive roar of laughter from backstage. And they said to me when I came off, they said she'd been like that from the moment she came in. And all they said was, I hope one of them knocks her down a pin or two. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I read in the brief as well. I mean, yep. You've got a few, Bob, so you can go and write on really nice holidays. <laughs> <laughs> really nice holidays, but you choose to take the children on caravan holidays, which I loved growing up, 
you know, like, and I think it's really important that they do go to them yeah. sort of holidays. I mean, and not having not being able to go to the toilet in the caravan, having to trace out in the middle of the night and go to the toilet. And you're saying shed. this like it's a good thing. Well, you see, it was in those days. We didn't even have electricity. We're not in those days anymore. Anything. But yeah, it was. It was. Well, lovely. I loved a caravan holiday. Do you know, I when I was young and growing up, actually, we didn't even have a caravan. We just went in a tent, and uh, it was so character building. And I think those experiences made me mm. the person I am today. And my husband, very different to me, he's of the opinion we're going to work really, really hard to give the kids the experiences we couldn't have. Yeah. Well, that's lovely. But I also want them to have the experiences we did have. Mm. Yeah. So he won't come. So I go off... <laughs> I'm I go with him. Yeah, my husband won't come. I go caravanning with the in-laws yeah. and I go camping with my mum and dad. And do you know what? It was last time I was down here. I'd come down. I'd been on this morning, actually, and then I'd got the train up to the Lake District, got off the train. My dad had pitched the tent on a hill. Oh, oh, oh The tent no. had a hole in. School and I'm boy at era. 3 o'clock in the morning, rolling down the hill, water <laughs> dripping on top of me, thinking, oh, my life. If everybody... Everybody who'd watched me this morning looking all glam... And then you could see me now. It was, it was a different Sarah you saw. I think <laughs> caravans are my idea of hell. I've been moaning in the, earlier on in the programme today about house arrest. To me, a caravan is just another form of house arrest. And I only went on one with my mum and dad uh, to somewhere in East Anglia. And I remember my dad used the opportunity to try and teach me how to drive the family car, which nice. I drove straight into a hedge on the other side of the field. <laughs> so I was, it was a terrible holiday on two levels. We all hated each other in the tiny caravan and I nearly wrecked the family Ford Prefect or whatever old car it was. You should try and do a couple of nights with my in-laws and the two kids in the bunk bed, see how you get oh, on. No. Oh, do you know, I'd pay really good money to see that. Oh, no. <laughs> right. you, do you find that when you're just... Because, obviously, you've recently been on the show, do you find going out on the street that people are coming up to you and trying to pitch ideas to you and things like that? How do you cope with that? Um... I must look very approachable. Because yeah. I, di I didn't yeah. have this experience when I would go out for dinner after the shows with the other dragons, yet I seem to be out everywhere and people come up, do you know what, I've got a great idea for you. <laughs> oh, God, and they're mickey. either taking the mickey, but three quarters of the time they're actually being really serious. Really? Okay. And I have to be I've like, I've got oh, this well... tent that you can put it on a hill <laughs> and it's amazing. <laughs> and it'll it'll automatically, <laughs> yeah. Now you know, that I, need I would to, invest I need in. to ask you very quickly, just before we, we need to go to the break, Obviously, there's a lot of businesses that are going to be struggling at the moment because of the coronavirus. Is there, is there any advice that you could give anyone who's watching today? Do you know, we were talking about this just before the show, and for a lot of people, maybe it work's not possible, or they were self-employed and they haven't got the work yeah. coming in. And, do you know, believe not, crafting, obviously, my, my background... I made my millions in crafting. Yeah. There's no reason we've seen this huge industry grow up yeah. from entrepreneurs starting, turning a hobby into a business. Mm. And online platforms yes. like Etsy, they're just... They, they're still going to continue to trade. Yes. So if you're stuck at home, you're looking for something to do, hey, have a look, see what you can do, get crafting, see if you can sell what you're doing, or if yeah. not, do you know what? It's just going to be a lovely pastime to, to pass away the next few weeks and yeah. months. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, Dragon's Den is on Sundays, 9pm on BBC Two. Lovely to see you. Thank you. You guys too. Lovely.